ArtRage 6 is here. It has a new feature where you can make your own thick paint custom brushes. I'm going to show you how to make your own brush so you can paint like this. Look at that thick paint. That is something else. So let's get into it. Here we are in ArtRage. I'm using the uh, standard view. I'm not using the normal docking view that I, I work in because I, I thought maybe some of you don't use that view and I want to keep it uh, as simple as I can. So uh, the first thing you need is a stamp to make your brush from. And uh, you can use some of the default ones, but you may want to design your own. So I thought I'd include that as part of this tutorial. Uh, just for thoroughness really so I've made a square canvas and I made it 250 pixels by 250 pixels and it's 72 dots per inch you can make it bigger uh, you can make it smaller but for me that size uh, seems okay and then you can use any brush you want I've chose a normal square brush and I've selected a black paint so you can uh, just put a stroke like that on or you can kind of go like that to make uh, your stroke but um, I'm just gonna clear that what I want to do is I'm just gonna put some strokes on and leave some lines like that so that is gonna uh, be the um, template for the brush that I'm going to use so I need to save that so first off go to export image file and choose PNG and put it in a, a, a location that's you know appropriate for you I've got a folder called textures and you can see here I have some brushes these are actual real paint textures uh, where I use some real brushes uh, so you could do that as well you don't have to use um, the digital method, but um, I'm just going to call this square red two because I've already got a square red. Yeah, so you can use real paint uh, marks or you can use digital ones. So I'm saving this here, square head two. So that has now got my uh, texture saved. As I say, you don't have to do this. You can miss this stage out but you if you do this you're going to get unique brushes that no one else is ever going to have so I go back to my other canvas and um, let's look at making these brushes now if you uh, want to load a texture um, that is already being used in a brush you need to choose the custom brushes here and then you can select a brush oh before I do that uh, I missed the stage out I think you should create a group to put your brushes in so I've got one called SEA oil brushes where uh, these are the brushes that I created uh, for the painting that I did a couple of days ago if I click add group I can just call this one uh, custom brushes no my custom brushes Steve's brushes will this take an apostrophe I wonder let's see Steve's brushes so I've now got an empty group so what I'm going to do I'm going to artistic and I'm going to choose a thin a, a bristle round by selecting the uh, bristle round once I choose uh, Hang on, I've lost my palettes. Let's get my settings back over here. Once I choose desi uh, brush designer, move that way you can see it. Once I choose brush designer, you'll see it says at, at the top right, bristle round. So it's using those settings that um, were, were used within that brush. So you can choose a brush that uh, you've probably created earlier and you want to use that as a starting point for another brush so if I cancel this by selecting your brush first 
and it has to be a custom brush you can't i tried selecting like the thick oil brush from the regular brushes but that was just um it, it didn't load those settings in at all it load the previously selected custom brush so you can also choose brush designer by going to the tools menu and from there you can see brush designer you can select it there but i'll also just choose it from there and i'll move that where we can see it there we go that's nice so <clears throat> once you've got uh, your um brush designer open you can paint there and what i want to do is load in the uh, texture from for the head this hasn't got a grain selector but we're going to put one in it anyway uh, if i choose head if i choose load brush head it opens up the um folder that i navigated to previously with all my textured brushes and you can see i've got um some that are organic brushes uh, and by that I mean I actually painted them on a bit of paper, paper stroke, and some that are digital, uh, these two. So that didn't work every time. So another way of doing it would be to go to add select from collection and then add image. And then from the Im image, you can choose your brush there and add that. Uh, I've already put that in once, so. Uh, on a previous attempt when I uh, I had to re-edit the video so uh, I've already put that in so let's select that and choose OK now if I clear that and I'm going to change this colour I don't like this colour if I paint with that I get this sort of inverted square thing going off uh, which is not good so go to head again and choose invert and that flips the colors over so now i'm getting a proper brush stroke uh, but you can see there's no texture and we want to make a texture brush so uh, how do we do that i'll tell you in a minute as one more thing i want to do first while we're here let's add the grain and I'm, this time i'm not going to create my own i'm going to select it from a collection and i've tried quite a few of these so in the artistic selection there's something called round oily and that works quite nice so i'm going to choose that and at the minute ah there we can see it's actually um already affected the brush in as much that um we can now see individual brush strokes but, but let's let's get some texture on it because that's what we want to do so uh, to do the texture, I choose this little three-dimensional ball on the end tab and choose apply paint texture. Okay, so now, wow, I've got 3D paint. But this is important. If you haven't got pick up color selected, you've got no texture. Even though it says apply paint texture ticked, and it is all grayed out. So if you're thinking, I've got it selected, but everything's grayed out. Why is it not working? You need pick up color selected. Okay. And now we've got a textured paint, but it looks a bit weird. It's sort of got this sort of, um, you can see steps in it, which look digital. So we need to sort all that out. So let's go back to the very first tab, select that. And um, basically, I've cleared this. If I, it's, the first thing I need to adjust is the dab spacing. If I push that right up, you can see I've got a lot of gaps between each brush. And as I pull it further down, they close up a little bit. But I want it no, uh, I want it set to zero, no dab spacing. And then I'm getting a nice paint and that, could be a brush in itself that, that that could be done but let's look at one or two other features that we've got here uh dab opacity if i whack that up 
you get a really nice thick paint but it I think it's a bit too much and you get this kind of finishing texture of of the paint on the end of the stroke if I knock the opacity down a little bit it just feels a little bit a little bit more organic uh, dab jitter that can be useful um, no jitter jitter max wool so that could be used if you uh, want to put texture on a rock perhaps or something like that make a brush for that personally I'm gonna have it set to uh, naught for this brush so um, if we choose a random start angle I think if I do that see every brush looks the same if I choose a random start angle now they're all different so I want that selected the random start angle I want it to follow the stroke so I'll leave that there um, rotate add if I knock that off basically the brush doesn't move you can see it's staying in the same position whereas if I have wrote a rotate head it is it's starting to move it will go follow the brush so set it to about 49% because you think about a real brush it doesn't follow you um, exactly as you move your brush the bristles uh, sometimes if you've done any if you ever did any sign writing or anything like that, brush you, you can use the sort of the way the brush um, doesn't follow exactly the shape of your brush to make sweeping strokes and things I didn't explain that very well but that uh, that's what I'm trying to say you don't if you make it 100% I don't think that would give you a natural looking brush I think It'd be easy to control but i just don't think it's that organic so scale with the ad uh, and grain size um i think the best way to show this is to whack the grain progression up the grain progression controls how much of the grain dominates i suppose the brush stroke so that's a nice brush could use that to put highlights on water I, I'm thinking uh, so the grain size now I can you can see clearly a lot easier what that does so I'm going to put the grain size in the middle and I'm going to take that progression right down there we go we're getting a nice looking brush so that's that tab the next tab um, allows us to adjust opacity and uh, the taper length now all of this taper none of it works if you don't adjust the taper length so the, the taper size I don't think it matters until you adjust the taper length now if you adjust the taper length and I'll, I'll take the size off did you see you get this kind of let's put this the size right up again this effect where it it's post brush stroke after you've done the brush stroke it does the effect and I don't like that I just don't like it at all you're not gonna know I suppose you get this taper thing going off but it could be nice it could be nice I suppose but for me, I, I would find that very frustrating. So I'm going to take the taper length off. Um, smoothing, I'm not going to use that in oil paint. Why would I want to use that? No, 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 no. That obviously smooths the line out. Great for pencils and things, but not. I don't think you want it for oil paint so oh let's clear that 
pressure variance. I don't know what it does. I'm sort of applying light pressure, heavy pressure. Doesn't seem to affect the size at all. Let's try the opacity. Maybe I should have done it. No. Nope. I'm adjusting the pressure and it doesn't seem to do anything. So I'm not sure what you'd use those for. The color, this is interesting, the color tab. Um, oh, you've got an erase mode as well where you can choose erase. Oh, it doesn't work in the, yeah, it doesn't work in the, um, in this section. Unless you come out, I think there's a bit of a bug in it where you come out of it, you go back in and the eraser works. It does work when you're painting with it. In fact, if I go um, OK now, and then just, uh, where's the brush gone? Choose Erase Mode. You can see any brush can be used as an eraser. I haven't saved this brush yet. So if I go back to Brush Designer, I can still work on it. See, now it's got this Erase Mode thing going off where it's buggy. So... Uh, Choose. Let's click OK. Paint with that again, and then go back into it. It works. So there's a bit of a bug there somewhere. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to the color. So I've got it picking up color. If um, if I choose color pickup basically what happens is if I change the color it will pick up some of the color the blue into this red and it contaminates the red and the more I pick it up the more it will contaminate it to a max I've got color refresh on so that because it's on max it keeps going back to the blue but if I knock that down I should be able to let's start again yeah you see it's keeping the the, the brush polluted a bit longer so it's cool for sort of blending what if I don't, oh i need a color if you've got no color refresh at all it it wasn't working at all then got no color to pick up so you need at least a little bit of that. There we go. So you can set those to, um, so you can mix your colors. I'm not so sure. That's nice, yeah, I like that. That's how I want it. That looks realistic. So I've got the color pickup set to five and the color refresh to 16. That's nice. I like that. Seems to me to be a realistic color mix. Now, color variance. Uh, sorry, very luminance. This adjusts the sort of um, saturation of the color. So without it, you just get pure color. And if I adjust it, say 50%, you see we're getting this um, gray red effect. Now you can use this, I reckon, to make sort of dirty, terpsy brushes and things like that, or for sort of grungy textures and stuff. So that's the luminance, uh, the color, 
no no color variance and if you whack it right up you get this <laughs> psychedelic thing i don't know why i don't know why you would ever ever want to use that um to me that seems it's just too much but if you do it very subtle You can get some nice effects and I'm thinking for sort of skies and things. 10% color variance in there. And then the sample tracing that could be used for, um, I think when you load an image in and you, and it picks the, the color up underneath that. So I, d I don't need that. And then finally we go to this, um, texture, 3d wheel thing so we've looked at loading and deposit the movement what does that do that seems to flatten somehow flatten that paint stroke That's quite nice. I like that. Uh, the scale. What does that do? Oh, I'm suspecting that might be the scale of the texture. We've got a flat, quite a flat brush going off there. I think I want a bit more movement in it. Um, zoom 100% nothing what's that doing I wonder if that's to does that affect the movement ah if I whack the movement up So it's kind of really making these the texture of the um I think it's this texture, this grain texture that it's affecting. And it's just making it really stand out, I think. Although that looks to me no it's not, is it? Because that's quite symmetrical I don't know where that texture is coming from oh it's this texture right so we can change this texture then let's do it let's let's just pop something else in there let's just choose uh, this round oily one again oh So that's interesting. So I've knocked the movement down a bit. Oh, I see. So the movement, I think, is that texture at 100% doesn't move. And then it sort of drags it. Wow, that's thick. So if I knock the zoom down. Does that do? I'm not sure what that's doing. Scale, let's whack that up. I think you're going to have to mess around with these to find out what they do. Follow stroke. Yeah, we'll have some of that. And then gloss. Finally, the gloss. Um, if you do a stroke without it, you get this sort of matte paint. Put the gloss on it. Let's put it on 100%. See, it looks shiny. That looks a bit too like it's you've um, 
adjusted the uh, sharpness of a photograph too much. That looks more real to me. Let's change the colour. So let's put that scale back down. Uh, if I take the, I think it's loading. That's better. It's not quite so thick. Bit more. I think I've, I'm going to take off that color variance out of it. I don't like it. I might just put it in at two percent. There. So that is it. I've designed a brush. So I click OK, and I can now paint with my brush. There we are. But we haven't saved it yet. So if I click off this, um, it's going to be gone. So I'm choosing Steve's brushes. And I've already I've saved this once already because I um, messed up with the video. And I had to re-record it. So uh, I'm going to go new preset. And it's saying we're going to put it in Steve's brushes. And I'm going to call it square thick paint. This is actually a better brush than I made last time. So if I choose square thick paint, it should give me the chance to overwrite it. Now I'm going to store the size because um, you've got an option whether you want to save the size that you're um, designing it at or not. And I like to save the size because if I'm designing a really big brush that I'm going to save at say 350% for doing skies and things. I don't want to have to keep uh, zooming in and out of the size of the brush. When I select it, I just want it to be big and I can paint with it. And likewise, if I've designed a brush to use it at 100%, I don't want to have to come away from my sky brush at 350 and then zoom it right back down. So I store the size and this is set at 100%. So I'm going to... Um, choose yes I don't want to store the color and I don't want to add it to the toolbox so it's saying do you want to replace that brush yes I do so now in my Steve's brushes I've got this square thick paint and I can choose any color and paint away with it so that is it that is how to create a thick paint brush one other thing if we go to canvas settings which i've got open here um you'll see it has light angle and intensity these are new features if i adjust the lighting angle you can see it changes the light on the paint texture so you can get you can adjust that and get a very different looking stroke and intensity you can uh, knock that down a bit till you get almost flat paint and then as you up it it adjusts the intensity of the light and you can see more of the strokes but the more you go you'll see it starts to enhance the texture of the paper or the canvas as well so I'm going to put it set it at about 28% there we go and there's just one more one more thing to show you if i choose my uh, presets and choose uh, this little icon that looks like a set of drawers with something sat on the top of it i can go to tool preset folder and that will open up a folder it's on my other monitor i'll bring it over here that opens up the location. I don't know if this works the same in in on a Mac, but in Windows, you can see I have my Steve's brushes, and I can 
uh, go into there and there's the brush so you can actually manage your um, brushes from here you can delete them you can move folders and I've actually tried this out copied them and pasted them and moved them into separate folders so you can reorganize your brushes just by um, using the um, Windows Explorer features by uh, just moving brushes around or duplicating them or, or or whatever you want so I just thought I'd show you that as well so that is it that is my um, tutorial on how to create a custom thick paintbrush I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing because I've got lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you so hopefully I will see you all in the next one bye